ancient Egypt. The land of pharaohs, pyramids, and perplexing puzzles is like the cosmic gift that keeps on giving, a treasured trove of enigmas that even the brightest minds of today can't resist. Sure, we've unearthed countless wonders from its sandy embrace, but trust me, the mysteries keep coming. So gather round, because in this video, we're diving headfirst into some of the jaw-dropping discoveries from the land of hieroglyphic riddles that can make even the Sphinx raise an eyebrow. Number 15. Headless Falcons Archaeologists recently had their archaeological detective skills put to the test when they stumbled upon a rather puzzling discovery. Picture this, a 1700-year-old shrine located in Bereniki, a bustling port in the Red Sea. At first glance, it might seem like just another historic find, but this shrine had a twist that would have even left Sherlock Holmes scratching his head. Literally, inside the shrine, archaeologists found 15 headless falcons perched on a pedestal as if they were as jury in some ancient avian courtroom drama. But that's not all. Right beside this curious avian assembly was an iron harpoon, raising more questions than answers. However, the true enigma lay tucked away in one of the shrine's back rooms, an inscription in Greek that read, It is improper to boil a head in here. Now, if that doesn't spook you, we don't know what will. Temple dedicated to the deity Zeus Cassios in a classic tale of archaeology meets ancient gods, researchers at the Tel El Farama site, nestled on the Sinai Peninsula, stumbled upon the enigmatic remains of a temple. But this wasn't just any temple. It was dedicated to a deity with a name as epic as its purpose, Zeus Cassios. Now you might be wondering, who is Zeus Cassios? Well, imagine taking the king of the Greek gods, Zeus himself, and mixing him with Cassios, the weather god. The result? A divine cocktail of thunderbolts and atmospheric phenomena. This deity bridging the realms of sky and storm was worthy of a grand temple. But how did archaeologists uncover this ancient treasure? It all began with an archaeological eureka moment when they spotted two hefty columns made of pink granite defiantly poking out of the earth. These columns weren't just random rocks. They were once the pillars that proudly supported the temple's front gate. However, as fate would have it, these grand columns eventually met their demise likely in a spectacular showdown with Mother Nature herself, a colossal earthquake that rocked the ancient world. But the remnants now on Earth tell a story of devotion and grandeur, a tribute to a god who held dominion over the skies and the whims of the weather. Protective Childbirth Tattoos in ancient Egyptian cultures, some expected mothers took a rather unique approach to ensuring a safe childbirth, tattoos. In a rare discovery, archaeologists stumbled upon six instances of this fascinating practice while investigating mummies interred at Deir el Medina, an ancient site nestled along the banks of the mighty Nile River. Finding ancient tattoos is akin to unearthing hidden treasures, primarily because of the preservation of the skin is a challenging feat over centuries. Archaeologists typically refrain from unwrapping mummies, which adds an extra layer of difficulty to such discoveries. However, in this remarkable case, circumstances aligned in their favor. Portions of these mummies were partially exposed, allowing experts to unveil these ancient inked relics. Among the tattooed mummies, one particular woman's lower back bore the intriguing marks of ancient Egyptian body artistry. Her tattoos featured bold black lines and an image of Abess, a deity revered for safeguarding women during the tumultuous journey of childbirth. The Greater Temple of Abu Simbel Picture this, it's the 13th century BCE in southern Egypt, and Pharaoh Rameses Il has a colossal idea. He decides to carve two jaw-dropping temples right into the mountainside on the banks of Lake Nasser. One temple, the Great Temple of Abu Simbel, is all about him, while the other, the Temple of Hathor, pays tribute to his queen Nefertari. Fast forward to the 1960s and the Aswan High Dam is under construction, but there's a problem. These temples are about to be submerged by the rising waters of the Nile. What do you do when you're faced with the potential drowning of ancient wonders? You don your engineering cap, gather your tools, and embark on an epic mission. The solution? Move the entire temple complex to higher ground. Yes, you read that right. Every stone, every statue, every intricate carving all had to be carefully dismantled and relocated. Imagine the world's most complex game of ancient Egyptian Egyptian Tetris. But it wasn't just about preserving some old stones. These temples are like a time machine to ancient Egypt's glory days. They are a testament to Rameses' eel's military conquests, his godlike status, and his undying devotion to Egypt's divine
Divine Pantheon. As you stand before these towering marvels, you can't help but be in awe of the colossal statues, the intricate reliefs, and the sheer power and opulence of Ramesses' reign. It's like a pharaoh-sized ego trip etched into stone. Mummies with Gold Tongues in the Greco-Roman era, ancient Egyptians had a peculiar habit, bearing their dearly departed with a little something extra special, gold tongues. Yes, you heard that right, tongues made of the glittering precious metal. Now why would they do that, you ask? Well, it turns out that the ancient Egyptians had a cosmic plan. They believed that by gifting their mummies a golden tongue, they were ensuring a divine transformation in the afterlife. Recently, a team of intrepid archaeologists embarked on a quest, venturing near Cairo to the ancient cemetery near Kuzna. There, they they unearthed several jaw-dropping examples of this unique burial practice, but that's not all. These tombs were like treasure chests brimming with goodies. Alongside the gilded tongues, they found an abundance of grave goods. Think necklaces, pottery, and even gold scarabs, those splendid beetle-shaped ornaments. It's as if the ancient Egyptians wanted to make sure the departed were not just ready for the afterlife, but also well-dressed for the occasion. The Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone stands as an enduring historical artifact, a hefty slab of granitoid stone, its surface etched with an official decree from the year 196 BC, jointly authored by Egyptian priests and the ruler of Egypt, Ptolemy V. This edict, a testament to Ptolemy's piety and benevolence, is inscribed in three distinct scripts, hieroglyphics, the sacred script primarily used by priests, Thematic, a more simplified script for everyday purposes in ancient Greece. The fate of hieroglyphics took a peculiar turn. After the 4th century, this intricate writing system faded into obscurity, leaving scholars perplexed and the language hidden from understanding. It was the Rosetta Stone that held the key to unraveling this forgotten script. But it wasn't until the 19th century, nearly two millennia after its creation, that this enigmatic stone fulfilled its destiny. The stone's journey to enlightenment began in 1799 when French army engineers pardoned Napoleon Bonaparte's campaign in Egypt stumbled upon it while fortifying a structure near the town of Rashid known as Rosetta. Initially, the Rosetta Stone was believed to have been displayed in a temple, possibly near the ancient town of Sais. Over centuries, it found its way to Rosetta, where it became part of the construction material for Fort Julian. The French rediscovered it during their occupation of Egypt, but lost possession when the British defeated them in 1801. The true breakthrough in deciphering hieroglyphics, however, came through the efforts of French linguist Jean François Champollion. Between 1822 and 1824, Champollion meticulously decoded the stone, revealing that hieroglyphics were a combination of phonetic and ideographic signs, contrary to earlier belief that they are purely symbolic, devoid of linguistic sounds. For this groundbreaking achievement, Champollion earned the esteemed title of the founding father of Egyptology, forever illuminating the mysteries hidden within the Rosetta Stone. Tomb of an Unknown Queen on the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tut's tomb, a team of archaeologists uncovered a significant find, the tomb of a previously unrecognized royal figure, Queen Neth. This remarkable discovery took place at Saqqara, an archaeological site located in Giza, and marks the first documented reference to her in the field of archaeology. Alongside the queen's tomb, the researchers also came across a collection of coffins and mummies. Interestingly, among these remains were those of King Tutankhamun's trusted generals and advisors, providing a fascinating glimpse into the entwined lives of these historical figures. Valley of the Golden Mummies Nestled within the western desert of Egypt lies the fascinating Valley of the Golden Mummies, a sprawling burial ground dating back to the Greco-Roman era. This remarkable site, discovered in 1996 by the renowned archaeologist Zahi Hawass and his dedicated Egyptian team, unveiled an astonishing collection of history. Around 250 mummies, each with a remarkable age of roughly two millennia, were painstakingly unearthed over multiple excavation seasons. Astonishingly, this number is just the tip of the archaeological iceberg, as Hawass and his team estimate a grand total exceeding 10,000 mummies concealed within this desert necropolis. The mummies themselves, when discovered, offering a striking testament to the artistry and diversity of their era. Four distinctive styles emerge from their well-preserved wrappings. The first, adorning approximately 60 mummies, featured gilded masks veiling their countenances, while gilded waistcoats depicted intricate scenes of revered gods and goddesses across their chests. The second style enveloped the mummies in cartonage, adorned with depictions of deities like Anubis, the god overseeing the sacred art of mummification, 
and his four divine offspring. The third style forewent gold and cartonage, encasing the mummies with anthropoid pottery coffins. The fourth and final style cloaked the remains in simple linen shrouds, a testament to the range of funerary practices of the time. Beyond the mummies themselves, these ancient tombs concealed a trove of accompanying artifacts underscoring the wealth and status of those laid to rest here. Among these treasures were intricately crafted jewelry and bracelets, pottery adorned with scenes of nourishment, wine jars, and even Ptolemaic coins. These accompanying relics provide invaluable insights into the opulence and prosperity of the people interred within the Bahuria oasis during the Roman period, where the ability to afford gilding and cartonage for mummies reflected a society of considerable affluence and cultural richness. That's all from us today. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thanks for watching.